Welcome, everyone, to the Cardio Seeds podcast. I'm Dr. Svetlana Shimon, your host. Today, we will explore the present and future of American healthcare, discussing ways to optimize the system and improve the well-being of medical professionals. So if you are with us, let's dive right in and begin this exciting journey together. My guest today is Jana Chala. Jana is a project manager at Clario, the leading global technology, science, and innovation company for clinical trials. Also, Jana is an amazing person, a talented chef, a great friend, a passionate advocate for animal welfare, and a proud owner of Martin, a pup whom she adopted all the way from Russia almost four years ago. Also, Jana happens to be my beloved daughter. But the reason I invited Jana to join me on the Cardio Seeds podcast today is this. Jana is a passionate and dedicated vegan. She has not been vegan all her life, and she became vegan shortly after adopting Martin. So she will tell us all about it. Hi, Jana. Welcome to the Cardio Seeds podcast, and thank Hi. you for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. Hi. Hello. Um, I have several questions for you. In sure. the past, you used to be an omnivore, meaning mm-hmm. you ate all kinds of foods, including meat, chicken, dairy, fish. And can you tell me what happened? How did you become vegan? a vegan? Sure. Yeah. So I think that it was really a gradual transition um, from being an omnivore where I did eat everything, you know, meat, fish, dairy, etc. Um, then I slowly became vegetarian. And then I just decided to take it up one more notch and just go fully vegan. Um, for me, it was more of a, uh, I guess, journey of discovery. Um, the more that I learned about, you know, how we get these products to our table, the more concerned I became with, you know, contributing to that and spending my money Mm. um, to kind of, you know, perpetuate this awful cycle. So I became a vegan um, after I learned, you know, um, the kinds of uh, practices that go on with um, factory farming specifically. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the transition, I should say, started um, after I got my dog, Martin, right? So I don't know what exactly it was about him, but, you know, after cohabitating uh, for a few years, I kind of realized that he is his own unique individual um, who has his own personality. And I, I realized that animals are not that different from us. And, you know, it kind of just changed my perception of what it is to interact with animals and how we should do it, for me at least. Right, right. So you became pretty much very much mentally invested into this idea yes. that animals are very similar to us in a way they're human, I mean, not human, but living creatures. Yes. And mm-hmm. they may be f- having feeling, they may have feelings like us and having their own independent lives. And it's not fair for the animal kingdom that we are interfering with their lives. That, that sounds pretty reasonable, what I'm describing. Yes, definitely. Okay. That's good. That's fair. And I always thought of veganism as a, as a diet. You know, don't mm-hmm. take me wrong, but I never, you know, before you became a vegan in our family, I was an omnivore myself. And, you know, after you became a vegan, I started looking into this deeper and deeper for myself. And then I also switched, as you may know, to a plant-based diet. And for a short period, a relatively short period of time, I became a vegan myself. Um, it was hard for me to be a 
full vegan um, mm-hmm. eight months. This is how long I lasted. And then I became, you know, um, more of a vegetarian. I still don't mm-hmm. eat meat or poultry or eggs or, or um, dairy products. Um, but I allow myself fish once in a while. Mm-hmm. But um, veganism for you or or many other people is a lifestyle. Can you elaborate on this? And um, are you one of those people for whom veganism is really a lifestyle? Yes, definitely. So, um, you know, to elaborate a little bit on what it means to be vegan, I think it's very different for different people, right? So depending on your priorities or your reason for being vegan, um, I think that this is really where things can vary. There are people who are vegan, like myself, for the animals, right? You know, um, the uh, you know, it, it's very important to us um, to ensure that we don't contribute to um, you know harming animals and uh, that we live you know kind of this uh, lifestyle where we are able to really kind of every day you know, show our morals and live by our moral code. Um, So I think that there are other people also who are vegan for health reasons. You know, um, you can get very lean um, being vegan. You can, um, you know, achieve really amazing um, kind of, you know, physical uh, results Mm -hmm. as a vegan. Um, And definitely, I think that people have this misconception that, you know, you're uh, protein deficient or, you know, lacking somehow. And there are so many athletes who really show that that's not true. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can be very healthy um, as well. And there are people who are vegan for the environment um, Mm -hmm. component. You know, um, being vegan is really much better for the environment. Um, You know, it helps cut down on... uh, all sorts of emissions that is um, are associated with, uh, you know, factory farming specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, depending on which of these reasons you or, you know, whomever is vegan, um, I think that this can really dictate whether or not it's a diet or a lifestyle. So for myself personally, I would definitely say it's a lifestyle mm-hmm. where I am very passionate about animal welfare, um, you know, and ensuring that I am, you know, able to do the the small part that I can control. You know, I can't control everything in the world, but Mm -hmm. I can control how I live in it and how I contribute personally Mm. um, to the world around me. So I think Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I think that definitely being vegan is a big lifestyle for many people. Um, You know, myself, I shop vegan, you know, I don't buy any animal products, you know, leather, wool, um, right. nothing, you know, even cosmetic wise or, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I try really hard to just avoid all of these. So, um, so it's a pretty huge, free product. right. It's so it's a pretty huge change of the whole lifestyle, oh, overhaul massive. of a lifestyle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of health, uh, how being vegan affected your health? Sure. Yeah, I think that vegan um, diet in general has been really great for my health. Um, There was a point in time when I very rapidly, you know, in my mid-20s, I'm 30 now. So in my mid-20s, I gained a significant amount of weight. And it was very unexpected because I had always been um, very lean growing up, you know, very um, physically active. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, once I um, stopped going to school and, uh, you know, got just a regular office job, right, where I just sat all day, I found it very difficult to um, get the same amount of physical activity that I once had, um, you know, going to school, working Mm -hmm. in a bar, constantly being on my feet, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, So one of the things that had happened as a result of this, I think, was that I just gained weight very, very quickly. Um, Oh, my. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Dogs in the background. Um, So I gained weight very quickly, and I had a very hard time losing it. Like, it it just kept, um, you know, piling on and on, and I wasn't Mm -hmm. um, losing any weight for a long time. Um, so 
interestingly enough, after I became vegan, one of the things that really changed was that I started dropping pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that, you know, this is something that's definitely achievable, not just through being vegan, but it really did help me um, kind of kickstart a much, you know, healthier, I think, um, relationship with food. Um, And then after I started losing that weight, that initial kind of momentum uh, had prompted me to, you know, become more uh, motivated to, you know, work out and things like that. So Mm -hmm. for me, being vegan uh, was really revolutionary and, you know, happy to say that I am very comfortable now, you know, in how I look and how I feel, especially Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, weight is just a number, but I felt uncomfortable um, Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel good physically, you know, from a health perspective, I did not feel good. And now I finally do. So this is a really good thing. That's amazing, right? You know, um, it's interesting. It brings me to my next question. I did not plan to ask you this question, but um, as you you touched on this, and I uh, I feel compelled at, to ask you this question. You know, you uh, probably know, and you know, as a vegan, probably much better than I do, that there are vegans who or plant based diets that are healthy and plant-based diets that are unhealthy. And people who are vegans or vegetarians are not necessarily consuming healthy diets and maybe damaging their health even more than when they were eating, you know, everything, whatever they, they were, you know, including animal products, sorry to say. But uh, what do you think about that? Uh, how um, what, what is your diet what what kind of mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think that that is a really important thing to note because you are absolutely correct there you know whatever your diet may consist of um you can have a healthy diet or an unhealthy diet regardless of any restrictions that you may or may not have so being vegan or vegetarian it's interesting because i think that there's this kind of association that people might have with, you know, oh, all they eat is salad. Eating grass, um, yeah. (laughs) Grass, exactly, right. But, I mean, it's 2022. That's completely not true. You have so many options to you. You have vegan ice creams. You have vegan pizzas. You have meat alternatives. You have dairy, you know, cheese Mm -hmm. alternatives, etc. So you have all these things. Um, I will say they are a little bit more expensive. So, you know, if you're on a budget, it's, you know, that they can really add up. Um, but they are out there. So if you are not focusing on eating healthy, you really don't have to. As a but vegan. are they However, are they healthy, though, those at those artificial meats and those artificial cheeses? Are they what what you would consider a healthy vegan diet? <laughs> No, no, they're not. Right. Yeah, so, this is what so I, I thought. The big, mm-hmm. the big focus is, um, you know, eating whole foods. So <laughs> just um, if you if you are craving those things every once in a while, you know, they say everything mm-hmm. in moderation. So mm-hmm. I do believe that that's OK every mm-hmm. once in a while. However, um, you know, even as a meat eater, they tell you that you're not supposed to eat meat daily. You're only supposed to maybe eat it once or twice a week. So I would kind of compare it similarly. If you're going to eat that, try very hard to limit mm-hmm. that kind of um, diet. But what you can eat instead is, you know, there's a plethora of vegetables, fruits, you know, awesome grains that I never knew about until I became vegan. Right. Um, and there, you know, there's like a million and one lentils, chickpeas, tofu. My goodness, the amount of tofu that I eat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you know, focus on these um, minimally processed and, um, you know, typically raw foods, mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables. I think raw um, is a good way to go for, you know, like nutritional um, composition. Packages, like right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so I think that, um, you know, there, there's a lot of very healthy foods to choose from as a vegan. And there are also very unhealthy foods. Um, And I do have to say for me personally, when I was in that transition period, 
I found it very difficult to, to stop eating meat. That was for mm-hmm. me the most challenging part. Mm-hmm. So I relied on those things more during that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as I started, uh, you know, getting used to this new diet, kind of learning new recipes and things like that, I was able to phase those things out to mm-hmm. become a, you know, every once in a while type of thing. Well, you actually are answering my next question because I was going to ask you how difficult you find it to be a vegan. Are you are you hungry? Is it hard to shop for the ingredients? Are they expensive? First, how yes. how hard it to be a vegan uh, for yeah, you personally? I, I think it's very easy. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, it's 2022. And it's funny because the more, you know, um, ingrained that you become in this vegan lifestyle, the more that you kind of uh, expand your network and you talk to people who, let's say, were vegan in the 1980s. And they will tell you their diet consisted of rice and beans, um, you know, very cheap Mm-hmm. vegan and pretty much you know they didn't have all of these different products available to them mm-hmm. so i think that now we are living in this really interesting era where we have these alternatives and we have so many choices as consumers so i really think that it's very easy to pick the you know cruelty free um choices mm-hmm. so it is i will say depending on what kinds of purchases you are making it can be more expensive right so mm-hmm. for example um vegan cheese tends to be much more expensive than regular uh cheese or the vegan meat alternatives are much more expensive than a real piece of meat mm-hmm. so th- these are also kind of driving factors to why you are a little bit more motivated to limit those things right. and how frequently you purchase them but I'm not hungry ever. I mean, you have to definitely be careful and you have to consider what it is that you are eating on a daily basis, right? Mm-hmm. I think that when I first became vegetarian and when I first became vegan, I was definitely nutritionally, um, or not nutritionally, but I, I had some, um, you know, vitamin deficiencies mm-hmm. because I wasn't carefully considering what it is that I'm eating and what it is that I need to be consuming to ensure that I am eating like a fully balanced diet. So Um, what is that? What are the deficiencies and what are the supplements that you have to um, to take to make sure that you are not deficient in any of those um, vitamins or uh, minerals or whatever? Yeah, so I would definitely recommend that all vegans take B12 supplements. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a very common deficiency. Um, and iron is another one. Iron, you don't necessarily need to take, uh, you know, the pill, um, if you are careful in eating iron rich foods. So for example, spinach is a great one, um, broccoli, things like that. So you, you can definitely kind of, um, research those, those, um, you know, vitamin deficiencies that are common Mm-hmm. in vegan people and what foods are very rich in those nutrients and then just go ahead and kind of tailor your meals a little bit more um carefully Interesting. You, know, you, you and i think that this applies to everyone this isn't just for vegans right mm-hmm. everybody needs to be considerate of what it is that they're consuming and making sure that everything that they are eating is really making their body function at maximum capacity you know, balance everything that they need to not mm-hmm. only survive but to thrive right right i i totally i hear what you're saying um i want i wanted to jump to a little bit different topic and ask you about your social life and your your friends you know i i know that you you had a lot of friends. You're a very social person, sociable, social. And um, are you were you able to hang out with the same group of people, the same friends once you became a vegan? Uh, how did they take your transition, your old friends?
Let's take a really quick break because I have an exciting announcement to make of this amazing book launch, the pre-sale release of Just One Heart, A Cardiologist's Guide to Healing, Health and Happiness by Extraordinary Dr. Jonathan Fisher has started. This labor of love explores the mind and heart connection. Dr. Fisher is a Harvard-trained cardiologist and a national and international leader in organizational well-being and resiliency. So please consider sharing the news of this new book with your friends, family, and members, as well as patients. And by purchasing during the pre-sale, everybody will receive a personal signed copy and exclusive perks like tickets to the book's launch party and the pre-sale only lasts till June the 16th. And I put the access the pre- for the pre-sale link under the description of this podcast so everybody can use it. Thank you. Yeah, that's an interesting question because this is something that I personally struggle with a mm-hmm. lot. And I think that, you know, the more people that I talk to on like social media, for example, things like that, I think that this is a very common type of feeling that people have where, of course, you're not going to, well, me personally, at least, um, and I think a lot of people are in this boat, you know, you don't want to alienate your friends and your family, um, you know. Mm-hmm. Your loved ones are important to you, and it's sometimes hard to reconcile, you know, how much you love and respect them, but how you can disagree so strongly with their choices. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that for myself personally, this has been most challenging from the perspective of um you know, trying to talk to the people that I love about why I made such a big life transition for myself um and especially because i think that most people that i know and love are self-proclaimed let's say animal lovers you know they really Mm -hmm. very strongly talk about how much they love animals Mm -hmm. etc so then when i kind of hear that i kind of feel the need to open up the conversation to say well if you're an animal lover do you mean cats and dogs or do you mean all animals because here are the things that happen Mm -hmm. behind closed doors and they are very known things don't get me wrong everybody knows what's happening on factory farms Mm -hmm. but what i found is that people refuse to listen they refuse to open their eyes and open their ears and they continue consuming these things knowing Mm -hmm. but you know just just putting it right out of their minds Mm-hmm. long enough to be able to make themselves, you know, feel okay about it. So that to me has been the most challenging, I think, thing, because it's, I I personally just reached a point where I couldn't do that. It's not because I wanted to watch these horrific, awful videos or mm. read these awful things. Um, you know, they're very deeply upsetting and uh, graphic and just, just completely awful. But... Yeah just pretending that it doesn't exist doesn't make it actually go away so i haven't you know (laughs) i haven't dropped any of my friends i haven't cut anyone off in my life but it's been it's been hard at times Mm -hmm. to you know kind of try and have these conversations with people and get just immediately shut down and pretty much be told you know i don't want to hear this so do you um do you try to convert your friends to to follow your you know path your footsteps or or how does it uh, what yeah, do, what I do mean, you I think try, yeah mm-hmm. I, I feel like when I first became vegan, I was very aggressive in my approach where I really, you know, um, tried to confront people with these harsh truths and Mm -hmm. kind of make them uncomfortable and things like that. However, people generally tend to not be very receptive to this approach. Mm -hmm. So I kind of loosened up a little bit and I realized that, hey, if I want to have an impact on the people around me and, and I do think everybody on this planet has a sphere of influence, right? You know, some people's are very large. If you are in the public eye, for example, and some people's are small, right? It's just, you know, my family, my friends, and, you know, some acquaintances, Mm -hmm. but you do have a level of influence on the people around you. So if you find a way to have these conversations where you're not aggressive, where you're not, 
you know, offending people or upsetting people, but just being thought provoking or, you know, kind of gently bringing these things up. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, it definitely, definitely makes things a little bit easier and people become more receptive to this whole concept. So in short, yes, I do try to convert people, but I try as hard as I possibly can to not be forceful about it because I know that people will not respond well. Right, right. Well, you you cert certainly planted seeds in my mind about, you know, thinking much more about animal welfare and doing things, you know, towards, uh, you know, stepping away from using animal-based products on all levels. So I had several conversations with you about it. And ever since you became a vegan, I started looking much more, much deeper into those things. And not necessarily that I derive any need in viewing those videos or anything. I think I may just have a heart attack <laughs> just <laughs> by watching them. But um, I think about it and yeah. it disturbs me deeply. And I, I stopped doing many things that I was doing before. Like, you know, those even little things like buying cashmere sweaters and stuff like that or leather bags you know purses and stuff like that so i definitely um even those minuscule small things that one person can do so you you just said that a person has a sphere of influence and everyone has different spheres of influence so you definitely influenced one person in your life me Thanks. So that's see, and I think that makes me so happy at the end of the day because this is, you know, while it might be minimal impact in the grand scheme of things, to me that's a big deal, see, and yeah. it it really does make a big difference. Even one person. Um, I, think I think it's, it's much really more than excellent. that. I think I think at the end of the day, uh, you will be counting those people much more than on both hands and fingers of both hands but you know um one has to start somewhere so i guess you answered my next question uh, whether veganism changed you as a person i think it changed you profoundly and tell me otherwise if i'm wrong no no you were definitely correct it it did it changed me in in a lot of ways and i think that you know you can say that it changed me as a person but also um i changed as a person and that's why i became vegan right so i think that um you know people when they stop doing something that they've done for a very long time there tends to be a big reason for it right mm -hmm. so if if you are just in the habit of doing something every day mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you make this you know very intentional um decision to stop mm -hmm. there tends to be some very deep personal reason for that sure. for people so for me that's kind of what happened i had this kind of i don't want to say spiritual but maybe kind of in a sense um i had just you know an awakening, awakening. um and a realization yeah. that animals are just so I don't know. I mean, they're they're voiceless. They are. They're fragile, you know. They're, they're fragile. I, I always think. Yes. I started thinking of them as fragile and incapable to stand for themselves, essentially, you know. Right. No, yeah, no matter how big they are and how fierce they look, but they cannot stand yeah. up for themselves. Against Not us, against they're. Humans, yeah. Right. They're against yeah. us humans with our, you know, guns and, and everything else we have, they're t totally, you know, powerless. Defenseless. Yeah, absolutely yeah. defenseless. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think that, you know, what what is our role in this world? Is it to uh, defend the voiceless or is it to exploit? You know, is it to make sure that 
our children and our children's children have a planet to live on or is it to continue you know this awful trend of um you know global warming progressing more and more to these just very scary realities that we are already currently facing and are only going to be getting worse so yeah. i think that you know at the end of the day if you kind of think about those kinds of things the choice to be vegan is very obvious <laughs> Um, yeah, what you what you described is a huge dilemma, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Yana, yeah. um, what what aspects of your life, except um, what you you have been talking about, what aspects of your life expect diet and um, overall outlook on life did veganism change the most, and what what are the negatives? And what are the positives? Well, I guess we talked about the positives. What are the negatives, if if there are any? Yeah. So, so I think that one positive that we didn't necessarily mention or focus on too much is the idea of, you know, branching out and kind of learning new recipes. I mm -hmm. think that for people who love to cook, um, especially who are you know, interested in exploring new ingredients, new techniques, and things like that. I think that this is really awesome. It's almost like a challenge and an experiment mm -hmm. for people who like to cook, um, because it's so different, I guarantee, from most people, you know, people who aren't vegetarian or vegan. It's very different trying to come up with, you know, again, these healthy alternatives. For example, a big one for, um, you know, like sauces, and ricotta, for example, you can make out of tofu, you can make out of cashews. Um, so you can, you know, kind of take these different ingredients that you would never think to use in this way mm -hmm. um, and just transform foods that you have been consuming um, into something completely different. So I think that that is one thing that's been really cool for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the negatives, I think that it's just, you know, unfortunately you do kind of um, I think have this feeling of burnout at times when it's it's almost like you are fighting for something that you believe in every day and it just doesn't seem to be gaining any traction, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's hard to reconcile this difference between, you know, personally having this impact on people and, you know, while you're very proud of that, you think about how, you know, in the bigger picture, these atrocities are still happening um, and people are continuing to consume meat and eggs and, you know, all these products. So I think it's really easy to kind of burn out and just say, like, what is the point of all of this and why won't it stop? Well, um, well, you know... I was thinking, and you know, maybe this is just, it just came to me now while you were talking and I was thinking, listening to you, you know, what makes large impact on people is really what can be like, you know, a written word or um, something that is in the book or something that is, you know, in the article that people can read a lot of people out there so and and voice their opinions so did you ever think of writing a book about veganism and about all those things awful things that are happening because those those things do affect millions of people when they when they read about this yeah and people well, still do read i believe yeah, I, it's funny that you say that because I'm sitting currently staring at a book that I have in front of me that's called Eating Animals. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yes, I do agree that I think that these things do really impact people, and I think that they they have this potential to influence people's decisions. However, what I find a little bit um, of a you know almost hurdle there is that they are very targeted in the same way so you know who's who's going to be buying this book it's somebody who's already interested in the topic right unless it's gifted to you i don't think that you will buy a book that you 
um, you know, are not interested in the topic. So I think that it's, well, it's definitely good to, you know, kind of get that um, idea out there. And yes, it is very easy to reach many, many people when you write and, you know, have this down on paper. I think it's also um, not necessarily going to reach everybody because I think that it's it's already still targeted to the people who do have that, um, you know, background interest. That's true. But, you know, when it's when it's out there, when you have a perhaps, you know, a lot of people, younger people especially, spend a lot of time on social media. And if you have a Facebook page dedicated to that or specifically, you know, I was thinking maybe, you know, a TikTok page or, you know, account or maybe specifically dedicated to that or maybe a Twitter account that yeah. doesn't need much work or much, you know, of your time being spent online. Um, yeah. Just keep, well, keep you know, bombarding people with short but very pointed messages all the time. And this is how you reach wide audience. That just occurred to me, just a thought, you know. Yeah, and I mean, there are definitely so many accounts like this. And it's funny because I, you know, I have a personal Instagram and I don't have a lot of followers. I have like 200 something, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's mainly just people from my high school, essentially. Um, and, you know, it's just my very close current friends, mm-hmm. but it's not, you know, a huge audience or anything like that. But what's really funny is that in the last maybe year or so, I have pretty much fully, you know, stopped using my social media platform to post pictures of even myself. And I don't know why that is necessarily um, not necessarily purposeful. It's just kind of something that happened. Mm -hmm. But what I do follow is a lot of these different kinds of pages um, that are vegan based and that are talking about, you know, animal welfare. And some of them are very, um, very aggressive with their messaging. Mm -hmm. You know, people, uh, you know, go undercover into slaughterhouses and things like that and really, you know, mm. uh, kind of like photojournalism of these um, awful scenes. And there are, mm. you know, some accounts that are just very nice that have, you know, pictures of cute animals that say things like be kind to every kind and things like that. So, you know, there's there's like a whole plethora of different kinds of accounts Um you know, and a whole kind of gradient from very serious to, you know, a little bit more lighthearted, but, you know, the same message, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I end up doing is, you know, just to my limited number of followers, I share this content all the time. You know, if if something invokes a, or evokes, I should say, sorry, um, evokes a strong reaction from me, or I see something that I'm like, you know what, this I think could kind of open somebody's eyes. Mm-hmm. Let me share this. I do that all the time. So I think that, um, yeah, like you said, I think that social media is a really, really amazing uh, platform to kind of talk about these things. And it does have a huge influence on people. So Unfortunately, you know, this has kind of become like our new books in a sense, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's because it's, you know, it's quick, it's easy, it's accessible, and it's widespread. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is definitely, um, you know, for people who are trying to get their uh, products, messages, whatever out there, I think that that's really, you know, kind of the the way to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, it's, uh, it sounds fair. Um, Yana, you are an accomplished chef, not a professional, but you are very good in the kitchen. And um, what are your favorite vegan recipes and where do you shop for the ingredients? Ooh, good question. So I, you know, depending, I guess, on season, I do try to obviously keep things seasonal, um, you know, in the summer. I'll buy a lot of like squash and zucchini, for example. Um, you know, in the winter, I might be uh, not eating so many raw fruits and veggies. I'll be, you know, cooking a lot more, uh, maybe root vegetables and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of go-to recipes. Um, I think it depends on, you know, the, the time commitment that you are willing to make. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I... I assume that most people 
get home from work or, you know, log off from work, you know, close their laptop and like myself are very exhausted, don't really want to spend hours cooking, right? So there are some recipes that are a lot easier um, and quicker. So those can be, for myself personally, I have quite a few go-tos. Um, stir fry is a big one. You know, you throw some bell pepper, some broccoli, onion, whatever, in a pan, stir fry that with some noodles, um, some tofu, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of peanut sauce, and it's an excellent dish that comes together very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, on the weekends, I eat tofu scramble a lot, so it's essentially um, like a replacement for scrambled eggs. Uh, so again, I just put, you know, different vegetables in there, um, uh, scramble the tofu, and it's really, really delicious. I will tell you, the secret is nutritional yeast, which is this really interesting um, food that, again, I never knew about mm -hmm. before I was vegan. Um, but it's an inactive form of yeast that uh, has this very cheesy flavor and is extremely high in iron. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's actually really healthy. Um, so I, it gives this really awesome cheese flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, so the secret is to definitely add a ton of nutritional yeast, mm -hmm. add way more than any recipe will call for and you'll not be disappointed. <laughs> um, I personally have been really into noodles of all sorts recently. So I, I just love, um, you know, we make ramen maybe once a week. Um, and one thing that I would definitely recommend if you were watching your sodium is to just use those ramen noodles and to not use the flavor packet. Mm -hmm. You can buy your own, um, you know, for example, like I have this umami mushroom powder um, and all sorts of different kinds of uh, spices that you can find at, you know, a specialty store, maybe like H Mart, for example. Um, so you can really make these uh, very, very good foods that are not necessarily using that essentially packet of sodium. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I pasta, you know, uh, salads. I'm a big salad person, you know, throw some chickpeas or some That's... quinoa in there. Um, some nuts, some fruits. Right. You can get like a really. I, I'm you know, imagining all those out. recipes as you describe them. I'm just it's mouth watering what you describe. I mean, it's seriously, it's so good. I'm. I think that you know most people really do have this unfortunate misconception of like vegans don't eat well, and my goodness, how wrong that is. And it's not There difficult. So many it food. does not sound that difficult when you describe it, and I'm sure it's that not. for certain people it may be more difficult than for mm -hmm. others, and you just make it so, sound so easy. But tell well, me... But to be fair, let me just say that the reason that I make it sound easy is because I've been doing this for a while. Like mm -hmm. I said, when I first started this transition, it was very very difficult. I mean, I was practically eating, you know, um, something that I would normally eat for dinner, mm -hmm. for example, a piece of chicken or fish, some kind of vegetable, and maybe like a potato or some kind of grain, you know, very standard, I think, meal mm -hmm. for people. Once I cut out the chicken or fish, for example, <laughs> I was just stuck with a vegetable and, you know, a potato. So I was essentially just eating sides for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And this is not sustainable. So, you know, it definitely gets easier with time. But I think that that initial phase when you were just, mm -hmm. you know, starting out is very challenging. So I think that the more equipped that people are to, um, you know, kind of be aware of that. Mm -hmm. and have those recipes mm -hmm. and, you know, good, nutritious foods available, mm -hmm. I think that the easier it can make that. And being, being more creative when the time, mm -hmm. time goes by. Mm -hmm. And that, that actually brings me to my last question of the podcast today. Um, Jana, what resources would you recommend to people who want to become vegans for various re reasons for health reasons or maybe for any what, whatever those reasons that you mentioned for animal welfare what resources can they use to you know minimize all those you know pains that you the tra transitional pains that you mentioned 
Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, thankfully we are at this point where we have the Internet. So we have all these resources at our fingertips. Um, (laughs) There's this, you know, I I think that for for people who are a little bit more old fashioned and might still like cookbooks, there are so many excellent cookbooks out there Mm -hmm. um, that are vegan uh, or vegetarian based. Um, There are, you know, obviously websites that are specifically on you know like recipe sites one in particular that is my personal favorite is called cookie and cake Mm -hmm. um it is uh entirely vegetarian and you know depending on how you filter you can make it vegan you can make it you know dairy free for example um you know whatever your kinds of uh interests are with regards to cooking and there are so so many recipes, so many excellent ideas, you know, not only for salads, but for appetizers, um, for different kinds of entrees, there's desserts in there, um, just so many wonderful and very healthy ideas, you know, the, the one big thing that I do keep, want, you know, wanting to stress is that we don't want to be using um, or relying too heavily on these uh, highly processed foods, right? Mm-hmm. So minimally processed, if possible, fresh ingredients, mm-hmm. you know, fruits, vegetables, greens, seeds, nuts, um, you know, legumes, etc. Right. So, you know, the emphasis is really using these very healthy ingredients to prepare something extremely tasty. So I would definitely recommend Cookie and Kate to anybody who would be interested in those kinds of recipes. There is just mm-hmm. such a huge, you know, variety there. Amazing. So I think anybody could find something that they like. Amazing. Well, Yana, it's been um it's been an amazing discussion today with you and I cannot think enough cannot thank you enough for taking your time to be uh, with me tonight um, at my um, Cardia Seeds podcast. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. It was my pleasure. And, you know, call any time to ask about these things. These are really my passions. So I'm, I'm more than happy always to discuss. Absolutely. My guest today was Jana Chala. Jana is a project manager at Clario, the leading global company, technology, science, and innovation for clinical trials, and a passionate and dedicated vegan. And that's all for today. I was your host, Dr. Svetlana Shimon, a board-certified preventive cardiologist and a cardiometabolic coach from the suburbs of Philadelphia. See you on the next episode of the Cardio Seeds podcast, where we will talk about the Mediterranean diet. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.